So this is White versus the Sicilian, Lesson 12. Uh, we're going to be dealing with the Sveshnikov variation here. So we have e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6. Now a variation in similar style to the Sveshnikov is the Kalashnikov, which would run here, e5 knight b5 d6 in effect it is the Sveshnikov but without the moves knight c3 and without the move of white knight c3 and black knight f6 inserted some years ago um, there was written a book called winning the Kalashnikov um, so you can take a look into that if you're curious about these lines Knight c3, e5. Throughout our discussion of the Sicilian, a reoccurring theme has been white's slightly, slight fragility on the dark squares, which has been caused by the exchange of c takes d4, knight takes d4, and here with uh, e5, black tries to profit from this by occupying one central dark square with a pawn, therefore gaining influence over two others, d4 and f4. This is all the more attractive as it comes with gain of a tempo by hitting the white knight, which is dislodged from its excellent central post. On the downside, black is allowing white greater control over the light squares. Not only is there a hole on d5, but white might attack f7 with the future bishop c4. Knight d b5. Only thus. If he is to avoid a worse game, white needs to discomfort black with the threat of knight d6 check. Acquiring the two bishops. If instead um, he made a move like knight f3, then bishop b4, and black is already threatening the e-pawn, to say nothing of d7, d5, which should free his position. Now, sometimes knight f5 is seen, uh, as this at least has the, a check on d6 in mind. But then, d5 should equalize for black. The knight on f5 will be hanging if white takes with the pawn on d5. d6. This pawn move not only prevents the check on d6, but it also fits in well with black's philosophy of dark square control. Bishop g5. White keeps up the initiative. He threatens to gain control of b5 in, uh, in great style with, uh, with uh, white moving bishop takes f6 and g takes f6, followed by white playing knight d5, and a knight check on c7 will be gruesome for black. a6. Black therefore has to challenge the knight straight away. Knight a3, b5. A good decision, despite the loosening of black's queenside pawn structure, as the pawn seriously impedes the coordinate the co-coordination of the white pieces by taking away the c4 square from the white bishop and knight. Now, instead, bishop e6 is sometimes played, just developing, but then the knight can seize the chance to escape uh, from its prison on a3 with knight c4. For example, here, rook c8. Knight d5, bishop takes d5, bishop takes f6, g takes f6, queen takes d5. Note the sequence of moves, and white has here good chances. Knight d5. Here, avoiding the fork on b4. So one of our knights reaches a great square, but will, it will take a lot of effort to get the other one working even half as efficiently. Now, a sharper and very common alternative is bishop takes f6, g takes f6, which would dislocate the black king side, but allow him to use the doubled f-pawns to undermine e4 in two waves, with a basic plan of f6 to f5, and then f5 
takes e4, and then f7 to f5. Black might also be able to attack g2 with rook g8. Our chosen move keeps everything under control, and also avoids the bags of theory our opponent has learned after bishop takes f6. Knight d5, avoiding the fork. Bishop e7. So now here, alternatively, we could have played, or black could have played, queen takes a5, or queen to a5 check. It breaks the pin on f6, but it rather lacks ambition, because bishop d2, queen d8. White could of course put his bishop back on g5, repeating the position, but we want to win. So let's try bishop d3. Now also a sharp, a sharp alternative to this would be c4. Now this bishop d3, black would play knight takes d5, e takes d5, knight e7, c4, g6, c takes b5, bishop g7, and kingside castle. Uh, and here we see black's collapsing queenside uh, yielded white a pass pawn in this uh, game between two Russians in Moscow. Okay, so let's back up to this position again. Black just uh, moved bishop e7. Bishop takes f6. Sometimes the bishops are servants of the knights. It's an, it, it is necessary to hand over the dark squared bishop to secure the d5 outpost. Black would already be thinking about getting the advantage of a different move like knight takes f6 check with bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, and white has nothing to show for his development but a lame horse on a3. Bishop takes f6, c3, and white has taken advantage of black's uh, move of 5, e5, by putting his knight on the d5 square, where it, where it is splendidly centralized, it can never be driven away by an enemy pawn. This is the further consequence that d6, d5, that the d6 to d5 pawn break, which is one of black's main ideas in the Sicilian, is for the moment impossible. With things quiet in the center, white can continue with knight c2 and then a2 to a4 to put pressure on black's queenside pawns. With luck, the outcome of this plan will be that after b5 takes a4 and the recapture with rook takes a4, uh, black will be left with a weak, a weak pawn on a6, which will drop off the board. Or if black holds on to the pawn by playing b5 takes f4, and then advancing a6 to a5, White has the opportunity to create a, a pass pawn by preparing the advanced b2, b4. This is White's standard plan for advantage, and not surprisingly, players of black have developed ways to contain its power. Nevertheless, it remains effective even at the highest level, as Leko and Anand will demonstrate uh, in the next lecture.